Hi, I'm here with 12 journals. A year ago, just over, I set myself the challenge of making and filling a mini journal every month for a year. I wanted to create some kind of rhythm of my own um, journaling, my own creating. Um, I wanted to be a bit more focused in my art um, and I wanted to become more self-disciplined, I suppose. Um, I gave up my job in teaching about two years ago due to ill health, um, both physical and mental. Um, and creativity has been a lifeline for me for many, many years. Um, and even more so whilst I've been unwell and in this very long, slow journey of recovery that I'm on, um, whatever that will look like. Um, so this has been a really personal project um, and I've learned a lot. Um, what I wanted to do in this video was just show you the covers. Um, I'm not going to sit here and flip through 12 journals all at once, um, but I thought that maybe you'd like to see the covers and then if you're interested in seeing more um, of each of the journals, um, I could do flip throughs in smaller groups um, uh, going forward. Um, it's been such a particular year um, in the world at large um, and also with an awful lot going on in my own family. So some of these books and their covers really do seem to chart the ups and downs of the year um, and you'll see as I go through them perhaps a little bit of that. So let's move these out of the way a little bit. Right. Sorry, that's a lovely shot of my arms. So I started off with the very first one in December 2019. These are really little booklets journals. They are nine and a half by 13 centimetres. That is just over five inches, three and three quarter inches across. Um, this one is just scrap paper, washi tape, a label um, and then a little stitched closure I've made with an eyelet and some string that goes round and round and at the beginning the most important thing was just keeping it simple and not over complicating things um, not using precious things at the beginning because I have a thing about not using up precious stash uh, bits of real vintage paper things that I love even commercially produced scrapbook papers that I love I have a real issue about using them um, so at the beginning, it was about just using things that I didn't really care about because then I could just work without getting worked up about it, if that makes any sense. So this was my first one, December 2019. Quite a lot went into it. Um, there you go. Then we get to January 2020. Why I started a year project in December, I don't know. But anyway, that's how it went. So January 2020 has some... Um, some sort of olivey ribbon binding. Um, got a slightly more intricate cover going on here now. We've got a cardstock base of some kind and a bit of stained, um, it's quite a heavy paper that's been tea stained. That's a Tim Holtz ticket. A little bit of shabby fabric and a vintage ish stamp. 1D. No, it is a vintage stamp, it's pre decimal. Um, and again, yeah, that is scrap paper on the back. And this is um, picture promos tape, which is really sticky. Um, and that one, again, has quite a lot in terms of contents, a little bit. Stuff coming out here. February. Now, this is a real fatty. And this is where uh, it sort of started to take on a bit more of a life of its own, this project. Um, so in this month, what was going into the journal, because the first two journals sparked a creativity, 
and I started making more bits and pieces. I started doing different things. And then those things that I'd started making, jumping off the other ones, whether that was just because I was going through my things and rediscovering bits and pieces that I had, um, or things inspired by something I'd started. So I'd obviously been making these, these tabs from bits of um, die cuts and scraps of scrapbook paper. So there's loads of those in there. It's a record of things that I bought and found. I remember this fabric trim came from a garment um, that I bought in the charity shop. Um, this is a royalty free image that I found. Um, that's just, so again, a, from a royalty free image that I'd printed out. Um, and these are um, decoupage, napkin decoupage, Decu I can't say it, napkin decoupaged buttons that I'd been making as well. So one of those made its way onto the front of that one. Right, so February 2020, and then we get to March. And this is when all the COVID stuff began and we first went into lockdown. Pretty sure it was March, not April. Um, so this cover... It's definitely less intricate. It's a nice piece of fabric, but um, I've just got a tiny bit of collage, a uh, a label, a hair tie, and you can see there's there's less kind of detail and embellishment going on in there, and that was um, a real indication of what was going on in the world, that I was very preoccupied, that I was finding it difficult to be creative. Um, and yeah, I did it. I, I, I filled the book, but looking back at it, I can see just from the outside that, that things perhaps weren't going as well. Now, April. Now, this is the one I really don't want to show because I don't really like the cover. Um, I like this paper. It's from the Victorian Albert Museum collection. Um, they made some scrapbook papers a while back. And this was me experimenting with printing on vellum. And then a, a scrawled label and a sticker. Uh, and it's pretty skinny. It's not a huge amount going on compared to a lot of the others. And again... Um, the very indication that April was a really difficult time. I think lots of people's mental health was suffering. I know mine was. Um, I had both my kids at home all the time and my husband was working really long days because he is a key worker. So um, we were homeschooling um, one of my children. My other, my other child is college age um, and um, is also struggling with health. So she... Um, wasn't fully homeschooling, um, although she was enrolled in a course which she did finish um, and manage her coursework for. But anyway, it was a really tricky time. And I think that this slightly sorry looking journal uh, indicates that. May. Things have settled down a bit, I think. This is a really nice fabric cover. I think I'd been doing lots of clearing and sorting out because I couldn't settle to anything else. And then slowly, as I found things and bits and pieces, I um, started to get some inspiration back. So we've got um, bits of stitched fabric here on the cover and on the front, some not vintage lace, which I've dirtied up a bit. Um, some labels that I made with like label stamps um, and a journaling card with a sticker. But you can see here that this one's fatter, fuller, there's a bit more going on. Um, and I was starting to refine my creativity in the midst of the crazy. June, moving into summer. Again, I was obviously being inspired by fabrics at this point. But we've got again a label I've made with a stamp. We've got a little yo-yo there, stitched from some stained cotton fabric, bit of old vantage. This is a vintage button from my granny's button box. Little um, book page covered tea tab. We've obviously got quite a lot of bits and fills in there. Fatty, 
this is a hair tie, but at least I've, uh, um, well, the last one didn't even need a closure. Um, and then we've got some scrappy collage with some real vintage uh, papers on the back. That may well be a Tracy Fox label and a bit of um, stained cotton there. So that was June. In July, I was having uh, a grungy uh, inspiration. I can't remember where it came from, but I definitely had a, uh, uh, yeah, a moment of, of wanting to do something a bit grungier. Um, some lovely pre-decimal vintage stamps here. Um, various um, bits of stamping on tissue paper that's been collaged down. Um, scrappy tie, made really scrappy tie, tied, from tied together bits of, um, you know, when you rip strips off the fabric, bits that are left behind. Um, yeah, some really nice, um, these are indigo blue stamps, I think. Don't know where that one's from. That's an indigo blue stamp. Um, yeah, so so look, working with like transparent papers and layer on layer, um, building up with grungy stamping. August. Now this little fake tea bag from a book page I made years ago, and um, I decided it had to be used in this vintage stamp again. A bit of um, William Morris design there. I bought this amazing um, ribbon tape measure ribbon and this is vintage doily and this is a bit of reclaimed fabric from a garment um, and I found this one with ribbon um, so more fabric -y collage there um, but you can see from this one it's not super fat but um, that this is I'm back into some sort of stride at this point I reckon this one was September so I've got a really nice um, autumn grungy collage with some mulberry paper leaves and this is jelly printed paper and um, the cover is jelly printed paper i actually went through all my painted papers and pulled out all the autumn colors i can remember doing it um and pulled try to pull together all my uh autumnal stuff um to put this together so that's got a bit of sparkle in it as well with a sari silk closure again it's not super fat but um it's a more cohesive journal, I think, inside. Um, and I definitely enjoyed the process of creating it more. Um, this is October. More stamps. This is a scan of a vintage document my husband gave me for my birthday. This is um, a stamp that I carved um, there with a sticker on the back. And I've blanket stitched. I used a really tiny punch. I think rather than an all, um, but a really tiny hole punch and then I blanket stitched all the way along the edge of the front cover there. And stitching, I've been doing more and more stitching as the years gone by and that's starting to come out then in these little journals here. And the other thing I found was at the beginning I didn't want to use anything precious. And as the process went on, I realised I was creating something precious. So there was no reason why I shouldn't put my precious things in there where I shouldn't use them so you know my vintage stamps which I've you know been hoarding forever and suddenly I really want to use them I want to put them in things you know original vintage papers going onto things things that I just would have not been able to do before so that was really pleasing and that was a really big part of this journey and then the last one of the series which some of you may have seen and there is a full flip through of this already um i bought excuse me <coughs> <coughs> sorry i bought these um digital eco prints from tailor made journals and added with some of my things that i'd been slow stitching um over the last few weeks um this came together in a really beautiful journal cover i've woven it's really scrappy fabric up the edge of this one. Again, I punched holes. Um, and this is a, a really grungy sort of slow stitched embellishment on the front. So that is all 12 of my year of 12 journals. Um, and if you're interested in seeing the insides of them, um, I'd be really happy to come back and make a video of them in, in smaller groups. Um, Thank you for watching. If you're able to like 
and subscribe and share. I'd be really grateful to help build my tiny baby new channel. Thank you. Bye.